Major cruise lines begin clamping down on their COVID restrictions on board ships as a response to the new Omicron variant. Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas this week saw 48 confirmed COVID cases on board. Well, now we're getting a response from the cruise line and I'd like to share it with you. Carnival Cruise Line says smoking is out in the casinos on board their ships. Plus there's restart news for two ships. All this coming up on Midships. Welcome to the Midships YouTube channel. I'm your Captain Corey, and thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. Well, as you can see, we are in our Chattanooga Midship studio, ready for a little bit of Christmas cheer up here in the state of Tennessee. And I'd like to start off today by apologizing for not having episodes out for the past two days. Unfortunately, I had some horrible situation going on in my right eye. The thing was just red and gross. You didn't even want to see it. So instead of making you guys suffer through that, I went ahead and took a couple days off. However, I am going to be wearing my glasses for a few more days until my eye feels a little bit better. So I'm sorry about the reflections that you guys are going to have to put up with here for the next few episodes. Now, there's a ton of cruise news circulating around about Royal Caribbean's allure of the sea and we're going to get to that later on in today's episode, but I want to start with some news coming out of Carnival Cruise Lines about some new policies going on on board their ships in response to the new Omicron variant. From CruiseRadio.net by Richard Sims, Carnival Cruise Line nixes smoking in casinos and addresses booster shots. In a letter to guests, Carnival Cruise Line announced that from now through January 31st of next year, there will be no smoking allowed in casinos across the Carnival fleet. In addressing this and other recent changes related to health protocols, Carnival's brand ambassador John Heald also set the record straight regarding the company's policy on booster shots. John says, in preparation for your voyage, we want to update you on the COVID protocols we're implementing fleet-wide for sailings through the end of January. All guests aged two and above are required to wear masks at all times when indoors, except when eating or drinking, or when in their own stateroom. Masks will also be required outdoors if in large gatherings where physical distancing cannot be maintained. But the sentence that caught many by surprise was this. Until further notice, there will be no smoking in our casinos. And when asked why this particular protocol was implemented, John Heald said the change was made based on the new variant, which is, from what health professionals say, something that we have to be very cautious about. In response to those who said they would be canceling as a result of the no smoking policy in Carnival's casinos, John Heald had more bad news. He says, if you are going to cancel, which some of you have threatened me that you'll do, there will still be penalties. Heald also took the time to clarify Carnival Cruise Line's position on booster shots after a letter sent from Carnival left some confusion. John says, I wanted you to hear it from me and I apologize sincerely if it was not clear enough. You do not need to have a booster. Yes, we recommend you have one. I've had mine. Lots of you have had yours. But if you have not had your booster, you can still come on your Carnival Cruise. In closing, John Heald said that the company has to keep changing their protocols in order to keep up with what's going on around the world. So I'd like to hear your thoughts about Carnival Cruise Lines temporarily making all of their casinos non-smoking. Go ahead and comment down below this video. While you're down there, I'd encourage you to check out our description box. Down there, you can find links to all the articles referenced in today's Midships episode, as well as a link to our brand new Instagram account. And way at the very top, there are Amazon affiliate links to Cruise Swag that would make a great gift for the cruise lover in your life, and most of them cost 10 bucks or less. Now I think it's time for a little bit of good news, and it's coming out of Carnival Cruise Lines. From CruiseRadio.net by Doug Parker, Carnival, Sunshine, and Liberty have returned to cruising after nearly 22 months. Both the Carnival Sunshine and the Carnival Liberty returned to cruise operations from Florida on Sunday afternoon. Both ships re-entered service early after the Carnival Horizon was taken out of service over propulsion issues. By the end of the year, the cruise operator will have 19 total vessels sailing from North America and the three fantasy class ships, Sensation, Paradise, and Ecstasy coming online in the first few months of 2022. So congratulations to Carnival Cruise Line on successfully restarting two additional ships. Now it's time to focus on how the cruise lines are beginning to respond to the new Omicron variant. And we're going to take a look at masking policies being implemented on three major cruise lines out of the United States. From CruiseCritic.com by Aaron Saunders. Omicron rise prompts Carnival, Royal, and Norwegian to require masks indoors for all. Three of the cruise industry's largest lines, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, and Norwegian, will be requiring all passengers to wear masks indoors unless actively eating or drinking as an additional 
safeguard against the new Omicron variant of COVID-19. Royal Caribbean updated their booked passengers on Friday and revealed they'll be requiring everybody, regardless of vaccine status, to wear masks indoors now through January 5th. Previously, Royal had allowed fully vaccinated passengers to go maskless in designated areas on the ships. The line currently requires all passengers over the age of 12 to give proof of vaccination as a condition of sailing. Carnival Cruise Line also revealed on Saturday that it would require the use of masks for passengers on all sailings up until at least the end of January of next year. And finally, Norwegian Cruise Lines, which has operated only fully vaccinated cruises since they resumed operations over the summer, had touted a mask-free onboard experience guided by their strong vaccine mandates that are in place. But this week, Norwegian too emailed passengers to say that it will now require all guests to be masked indoors when not actively eating or drinking. So if you have a cruise booked between now and the end of January, it might be a good idea to take a few extra masks along with you. Now here at the Midships Channel, we've tried to be pretty cautious about the emergence of this new Omicron variant and how it's going to affect cruising. But as you can see, just in the reporting from today's episode alone, we're starting to see some repercussions coming from the Omicron variant. And I think that's the perfect time to segue into the news that's broken over the weekend regarding the Symphony of the Seas and the 48 positive coronavirus cases that they saw on board the ship. So let's go ahead and learn a little bit more from Cruisely.com by Tanner Kalis. 48 aboard Symphony of the Seas test positive, with most being fully vaccinated. There are growing signs that the Omicron variant could cause issues for the cruise industry, just as it has caused issues on land. First, the number of ships showing possible cases has spiked in recent days, according to CDC data. Second, major cruise lines recently made masking indoors mandatory, including Norwegian Cruise Line, who sails with 100% of passengers and crew fully vaccinated. And I think it's a great time to break in and remind you that the CDC, as well as Cruisely.com, operate a really good tracker for cruise ship status. So if you'd like to check out the status for the cruise you're taking next, all you have to do is follow the link in the description below. But now the world's largest cruise ship, Symphony of the Seas, just saw 48 people on board test positive for COVID. Among those testing positive, 98% were fully vaccinated. While it's not clear if the cases were from the Omicron variant, it is believed to be better able to evade vaccines. Symphony of the Seas docked back home in Miami over the weekend. Royal Caribbean says the ship had been carrying 6,091 passengers and crew as it sailed a week-long trip to the Eastern Caribbean. That means the 48 people testing positive represent a little less than 1% on board the ship. I'd like to read a statement now from Royal Caribbean. Each person quickly went into quarantine. Everyone who tested positive was asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic, and we continually monitored their health. Six guests were disembarked earlier in the cruise and were transported home. Royal Caribbean also said future cruises will not be impacted. In fact, the ship is currently docked in Cozumel, Mexico. Outbreaks aboard cruise ships have happened from time to time. This includes several reported by the CDC that impacted more than 100 people across consecutive voyages. Still, the vaccine and testing protocols on ships have largely limited spread. The Omicron variant definitely has the attention of the cruise industry as they resume their sailing. So that should give you a pretty good update as to what went down recently aboard Symphony of the Seas. And so now I'd like to present to you an article that gives Royal Caribbean's response to what went down on board. From TravelPulse.com by Lori Barati. Royal Caribbean speaks out about recent onboard COVID cases. 48 people sailing aboard Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas tested positive for COVID during a seven-day round-trip Eastern Caribbean cruise that departed Miami December 11th. That number equates to 0.72% of the ship's total community of 6,074 passengers and crew, the rest of whom were advised to visit a certified testing center within three to five days of disembarking on Saturday. The cruise line also notified passengers of the December 11th through 18th voyage, along with those who had sailed on two additional symphony itineraries prior to this one. The notice sent out said that a guest who'd sailed aboard one of the ship's earlier departures had since tested positive for the Omicron variant. Royal Caribbean spokesperson Lion Sierra Caro told USA Today, we were notified by the CDC that a guest on board our December 4th cruise tested positive and it was identified as Omicron. 
the CDC asked us to notify guests on the sailing and the one that ended today, as well as the current one. Were it me, I don't know that I would make my company spokesperson have the first name Lion, but I think that's just a happy accident. Now to clarify what we just read there, Royal Caribbean basically said the CDC came to them and said, hey, we identified Omicron on your December 4th sailing, and we'd like you to notify everybody that was on that sailing, your current sailing, and your next sailing that this happened on board your ship. The cruise line informed the past passengers of Symphony of the Sea's three most recent sailings of their findings in an email explaining what has actually occurred. And the email read, This guest did not report symptoms to our onboard medical teams as outlined by our health and safety protocols. Their post-cruise test results were subsequently confirmed as being the Omicron variant. In the email, the cruise line said that the 44, now 48 positive cases discovered on December 11th were unrelated to the Omicron case from the guest who sailed on December 4th. So it's important to remember this is a developing story coming out from Royal Caribbean. We're going to go ahead and keep monitoring this situation. I'm sure there's going to be more news coming out. The mainstream media seems to have really caught hold of this and they're sinking their teeth into it and really sensationalizing it. I think it's important to be able to remain objective here and realize that there were 6,000, almost 6,100 people in close contact with each other for almost a week and only 1% of those people contracted COVID the whole entire time. So the big takeaway here is that the protocols on board these ships appear to be working and working fairly well, as long as cruisers are upfront and honest about what's going on with their health. If you made it this far into today's episode, why haven't you subscribed to the channel yet? While you're down there, do me a huge favor, hit that big thumbs up button. It tells YouTube to push this content out to more cruisers like you. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. Until next time, we'll see you on the midships.